Thanks for tuning in to part three of this video series. In the first two parts, we looked at the creation of what you see in front of you now, which is a dashboard that links together information from six different sheets within the file. So we had a training load sheet, a wellness sheet, some match performance stats, some medical data, and some physical profile and case management notes. So all of that stuff was pulled in using different techniques as illustrated in the two previous videos. On my YouTube channel, you can see these two videos, number 97 and number 96. Um, as you can see, there's about an hour's worth of stuff there to, to walk through to get to that point. Now, all the way through those videos, it was assumed that you had a little bit of skill in Excel because right at the beginning, it was straight into it, extracting information and creating charts, some of them which were a little bit tricky with some tricks and stuff involved. Now, if you haven't got those skills, it can be pretty hard to follow along uh, these videos. And so I've got a, a couple of series of videos that could help with that. If you are straight up in s &C and you're dealing with gym loads and GPS data and things like that, then this could be the one for you. I'll put a link at the bottom of this video in the description that'll give you a discount and you can get on and develop some of those basic skills. If you are more of a performance analyst and you're more used to dealing with match stats and things like that, then this course could be for you instead. That is on the videoanalyst.com's website. So either way, it's that fundamental skill that allows you to get on with it and do some of these kind of cool dashboardy projects. All right, back to the dashboard that we've already been building. I just want to point out one more thing before I get started. And that one thing is that I haven't used any pivot tables and I haven't used any code. This has almost exclusively been uh, formula and built-in features of Excel, such as drop-down boxes and scroll bars. Now, the reason I did that, uh, it was deliberate, is because I just wanted to make sure that there was no compatibility issues. If you are just building something for yourself and you use Excel 2016 on a PC, then you can do a few more things, particularly using slices and pivot tables and timelines and so on, that you might not be able to do if you're on an earlier version of Excel or if you're on a Mac version of Excel. There's a little bit of complexity around that, unfortunately, but the uh, people at Microsoft are trying to make things as compatible as possible across the versions, but it's probably gonna take a couple of years. So as a consequence, a number of the projects that I make are very, very clean and that they don't have a lot of those compatibility issues in place. I just use formula and occasionally that can make it a little bit more clunky rather than having a nice looking slicer to play with, you pick from a drop down box, but nothing's perfect and the key is just to make something work. Now onto the topic of this video, I really just wanted to go through a few additional and extra options starting from the top left hand corner where we've got updates. Now all I did, if you recall in video one, was go through and extract the five most recent notes that were made that were either priority one or priority two. You can see that there's a little bit of a mix there. We've got medical, s &C, nutrition and mental as those topic areas but sometimes you'll get a lack of information about a particular area because you're using the criteria that we have which is just the most recent priority one and twos so if i go to the workings tab what i want to do is set up an alternate option we've got five categories performance nutrition strength and conditioning medical and mental and what we want to change here is that it pulls out the most recent update for each discipline. Let's start with that and we can add the priority in there as well. If you recall how we did this previously, we used a row counter and the aggregate function to extract the row number of the record that met our criteria. Inside that formula bar, I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna put it straight down and let's go in now and update this formula to give us what we want. If we read it, if you remember, aggregate takes the largest 
row that doesn't have an error in it. That's what number six means. And then we've got all our specific criteria after that. What are we trying to extract? We're trying to extract the row number that has the athlete name in it. We did minus four because there was some heading rows and blank rows in the table. Now we get into the key piece, which is our criteria. The criteria has to have the athlete name equals, in this case, Amy Johnson, and the priority level as less than three. I'm going to change that. I think in the table we called it focus, um, and this I've called it area, so I apologize for that inconsistency. And we want it to equal performance. In all cases, rather than referring to a cell, I just want to make sure I pull in the most recent. And so that is one, the largest row number that meets our criteria. And it's going to pull that in like that. If we drag down, let's see if we get row numbers that seem like they make sense. This looks good to me. And so I think what we can do is once again, just capitalize on our earlier work by copying and pasting the formula and modifying it. Use the Format Painter here, double click and send it down, drag it across, a little bit of editing, nearly there. Don't forget to edit it. We want it linked to our new row number. And the comments that I've made were very generic just because I wanted to make sure I had the right information being pulled through. So we can see this is performance feedback, nutrition feedback, SNC, medical and mental. If we decided that we also wanted to include the priority level as a criteria, we could do that. We can go up here. And copy what we've already written before and put it down the bottom here. We've added a new criteria that says it must be from our specified area, which is performance in this case, as well as being related to this athlete name, as well as being priority one or two. So we can see in this instance the most recent performance comment was a long time ago and so you do have to decide whether you want to do that or whether your previous method was actually better most recent comment whether it's priority one two or otherwise let's go in and edit that let's include priority three updates and see if we get things a little bit more recently anyway hopefully what you're doing is seeing that you can set things up however you like now we've got two grids. We've got most recent P1 and P2 updates regardless of area. And this is the most recent from each area. I'll just edit this. So there are our two options. On our dashboard, what we could do, uh, it's not going to be pretty, but I'm just trying to show you functionally how this might work. Let's go into the data validation settings. Normally when I go into list, I'll point to a, a range of cells or a named range. But I could avoid that if I wanted to and simply type something. I could type all areas or I could type something like that. All areas or recent P1 and P2. And when I do so, they're just the two options that present themselves. Let's put that in there. going to merge that all areas is easier to type so I'm going to start with that point if the cell here don't forget to lock it with the F4 key so if it says all areas what we want to pull through is no longer working C8 
it is actually this one down here. If it's the other one, definitely want working C8. If I pull this down, that will copy that across. Because I have um, zoomed out a little bit, it shows up as hashes because it's too big to fit into the cell. If I blow things up, we can see that it sorts itself out. So um, sometimes those date formats need to be formatted in a different way. So let's try that. So we could do Control-1 here and do Custom. And instead of four digits for year, we could just do two. Now it fits pretty comfortably, and so sometimes little changes is all that it takes. Now if we look across here, we've got the same direct cell reference. And so this one was column C, and this one was column D. So we can pull this across, although we will have to adjust the date. Keep working on the formats all the time. And this one was column F. So if I just drag this one and then relocate it. Pull it down. Okay. Tidy up the formats. I'm trying to keep it clean without too many grid lines, but you can do whatever you like. Now let's just see what happens when we muck around with this drop down box. So now we've only got recent P1, P2, or all areas. So you've got the best of both worlds. It's a little bit ugly having that drop-down box there, but um, you could figure out a more elegant way to do that if you wanted to. Either way, the functionality that I was looking for is now in place, so I think that's pretty cool. Let's go down here. We've got probably the biggest chart on the dashboard, and rightly so, is match performance, because that's what it's all about. Let's add some data to that because it's a lot of real estate being taken up by a chart that's only got a small amount of information. So on the working sheet, I've done a little bit of stuff already. What I've done is the average opponent rating. I may not have explained that too much. So let's insert a comment. A comments box appears and I can write something and normally I'd do this for myself or for another user's benefit and in this case what it's saying is average score for our players against this opponent and in the second one I'm going to put a comment as well Simply saying that what is the average score for our players in this game? So just this game, not all the other times we've played this team. And so those two reference points might be useful. If someone doesn't score as well as they're used to scoring, it may be because the opponent is a very good team. Or it may be because everyone had a bad day that day and therefore their performance was actually better than average with regard to the rest of their teammates. So those reference points is what I want to plot. Let's do that. On the dashboard, we can go to the chart, select it, and choose Select Data. At the moment, it's got Series 1. We can edit that. Now we need to give it a label because um, we're going to be adding a different series and we want to make sure that it's clear. Let's put opponent average. And one more. You might call it game or match. Um, I'm being a little bit inconsistent again, sorry, but everyone's got their own terminology, so um, hopefully that's not something that's a big deal. So we've got those two new lines drawn. I want to change what they look like. I'll do that shortly. But firstly, I just want to make sure that we have the correct axis labels 
Excel pretty much figures it out, but I don't like taking anything for granted. I usually don't have to add it a third time because it's picked that for me. So you can see that it did that game average one automatically. All right, so we've got that all connected now. Format the data series. Take away the line. And simply put in a marker. Such as a box. Make it a bit bigger. So you could do that. I'm not sure orange is the best color, but let's just choose something else for now. Second option that you could go for is simply to have a very, very light and even a dashed average line. Now, this is where you need to get your consistency right. So because my grid lines are in there and they're the same color, this reference marker isn't super visible because it kind of gets lost and it's relatively straight. We've got a box with no line and we've got a line that's very thin and very faint and dashed. So there's no illusion as to what's the important bit. Because I haven't added a legend, I need to do that now. Go into the design tab for that. And we can do it all from this menu here. I like to put my legend at the bottom and make sure everyone knows that that's what's going on. So we've got everything in place now. You might put data labels on, but at the end of the day, I think what we've got here is has already added some information. So what we can have a look at, particularly in these middle three games, Shark, Storm and Warriors, that Amy has performed above the team average, which is the dash line, and significantly above the average score that's normal against these three opponents. Whereas in the two endpoints, the Tigers and the Blues, much closer to the team average. So those reference points add some useful context to what is otherwise just a chart. I want to skip down to the medical section now. Something I want to do to this chart here, the availability score chart. For a start, we don't have a legend saying what this is. So let's do that now. Because I did this about a week ago, even I'd forgotten what was my moving average interval. I just randomly chose that as four. So um, this legend is useful. Next thing I want to do is, now that I've decided that's how big my chart's going to be, I'm going to draw a line on there. And so, very simply, in the Shapes tab, right along this one grid line, I'm going to draw a line. Now I'm going to format it, and very stereotypically, I'm going to make it big and fat and dashed to indicate that this is the line that you don't want to drop below. So if you recall, the availability score says that if it's three, it's full training. If it's two, there was some modifications made, but they were small. If it was one, there were modifications made and they were large. And if it's zero, that means there's no training. And so dropping below that one line or anywhere that you want it to be can help uh, another person understand that this is the risky bit. When the blue line drops below the red line is where we've got a problem. These numbers here are a weekly average using those axis labels at the bottom. And so that's okay. Someone might understand that. But what you might also do on the insert tab just put a text box in there. Um, you'll have to find the appropriate place, and that's personal preference. So I've just written a, a very sort of simple comment there. I could also make that red, bold, and big. And something that I think is quite important is I want to group that new text box. 
the new line I've drawn and the chart itself. Holding the control key down allows me to have all three of those items selected. And now when I click group, what's good now is that this will move as one. Second thing I wanted to have a look at requires us to go to the workings tab. We haven't got much information here um, for the medical section. We've just got an average availability, um, the player's stats, how many sessions were missed or modified due to illness, injury or other. And I've got a blank at the moment that says cost. Let's go and have a look at that. I just made this up so there's no uh, logic behind it. But these are the kinds of things that I toyed with when I was working uh, very closely with some high performance teams. So I wanted to get a score about what was the cost of injury. And I made up some numbers that said if there was a partial modification made to a session, the cost of the illness or injury that led to that was 0 0.4. If you significantly had to modify a session, then the cost of the illness or injury that led to that was 0 0.7. If you missed completely, it was 1. So I put a little comment in just to try and remind uh, myself, if anything, what I did by that. And let's say I changed my mind, and this was 0 0.65. These are just live formula, so it's going to update. So it's up to you. But what I wanted to show was that what was the cost of some of these injury groups and what was the cost of different sites. And so across a team, these stats can be quite interesting. To present some information on the dashboard uh, is tough here because you've got a lot of categories and you can't produce them all. So let's just say we're going to find up the top the highest group. So we could do this in a couple of ways. I'm going to do it the slow way to make it easy to understand. Let's find the maximum cost in this group. Let's assume that there's no duplicates because that then requires a different formula and it's a little bit more complex, but for now it's easy. The highest cost was 22.8. Now we can say what was it by using the index and match functions. Like I said, I'm going to do this the slow way. Where was the max in this list? The third row. Now let's pull it out. Equals index of that. Using that. Soft tissue. If I drag that across, it's going to stay soft tissue because I locked it. But it's relatively easy to realign. So we've got soft tissue 22.8. Let's go to the dashboard, pull that in. Simple direct reference will do that for us. And if I drag it across, it pulls in. Highest sites, we're going to do the same thing again. This time, let's pull in three. So max is great if you just want to pull out the highest one. If you want to pull out second highest or third highest, you have to do it a little bit differently. But Excel can figure this out without a problem. Once again, I'm going to do this the long way. All right, firstly, let's find out what the largest value is. There is a function called large. We want to look in this array here. I'm going to lock it because I hope to drag this down. And I want to find the largest one. Let's drag this down. We get 15.4, 8.05, and 1.7. We know that's right because we can see it. Because in this particular case, I skewed the data just to make it obvious. So we've got groin, hip, thigh, and knee. Same thing as before. We need to find out where in the list. This item occurs, and we can then use that in our index function. Uh, it's easy to just do it up here next to it, equals index. What do we want to index? Well, we want the site. Lock it, reference to our row cell, 
and we can pull out the thigh. Pull this across, do a little bit of an update by dragging our cells around. We want cost here. 15.4, we should get 8.05 and 1.7. So we can now link that up to our dashboard sheet, easy as you like. Um, the other thing I wanted to have a look at was using a count function, found out that there were 132 sessions that this player had attended. I'm just doing a percentage here that says that is 3.7%. Let's put that on there and copy. And so we can see that 28% of sessions were affected by injury for this player. Like I mentioned, I stacked the data for this player just to make it seem like we had a problem. The question is, do we want to apply that cost concept and pull it into the overall score for the player? What was the missed session cost for this athlete due to all reasons? Now we can go back to the workings to figure this out. So we could do it here if we like. Or we could do it over here. So let's just say a direct link 25.2. So that's using our scoring system, even though there was a total of 46 sessions missed or modified due to injury, the cost was 25.2. And so some of this information is useful. It depends on the methods that you choose. So I haven't done a lot of formatting here. I'll do a little bit now, but otherwise I'm just going to leave that as is. Possibly with a little box around is a good way to make it stay a bit tidier. Last thing I want to have a go at is the wellness and load. Now, everyone's um, getting a little bit tired of, of training load concepts probably, but uh, nevertheless it's pretty popular stuff. So let's go to the workings and try and figure out what we could do if we wanted to add some information to the workload and wellness section. A really obvious thing that we could do is look at percent change from the previous week. So that's pretty easy. That's really just saying this week minus last week. has been a 750 unit decrease. Now, depending on how you do this logically, I would divide that by the previous week, convert to a percentage to say that there's been a 25% decrease. If I pull this down, it would do that calculation all the way through. So you can see we've got a couple of very interesting moments throughout this uh, display data with some really big changes. As we can see, 2138 definitely manipulated these um, values to make it a good example. Let's look at the chronic load. So, um, could be four weeks. I'm going to put that up here because sometimes we take for granted that everyone does the same stuff when I know full well that that's not the case. So I'm going to put four weeks. We can't get a chronic load until we've got four weeks of data. So, average to here, round that down, and copy. Now because this is actually week 19 of data, we should very easily be able to get the previous um, information as well. And so we could just do that by dragging this up. And so we don't need to pull this all the way to the top, but what we do need to do is make sure that we have the data that we need. I'm going to grey them out a little bit. They're really just for us to be able to do that percent change in chronic load calculation across all four weeks. 
if we did choose to scroll all the way back to week one, then they wouldn't work and they'd give us some errors. So um, we do have to be a bit careful and it's not perfect, but that's okay. Now I want to do something else here because availability and workload are, are pretty closely linked. Yeah, now we've got the data already calculated, so it's just a lookup. It's not complex at all. We need to look up the availability score, which we've calculated down here. I'm going to lock that with the F4 key. We need to find the correct week by matching whatever's in this cell. In this range here. And so I'm using the F4 key all the way through just to make sure that I don't get any errors when I drag down. And so we've now got three reference points there, chronic load, percent change, availability. And I put a comment for myself, so let's see what it is. What has been selected on the dashboard? All right, so we did this before. Let's try and figure out where we might put a drop down box. Um, it's not immediately obvious. So I'm going to just put it up here on the on the grey title bar. Let's go back to the workings. Selecting these three options. I'm just going to call it list of load labels. It's not particularly uh, descriptive or useful but um, just keeps things rolling along. Now on the title bar, data validation list, because I've made a named range, F3 brings those names up on a PC. We can just choose it. And so it's pretty easy now. Chronic load, percent change, availability. Now I've abbreviated that, so it might be worth us on the workings tab Getting that out. And making a little bit more descriptive. Let's go back to the dashboard. We can see because it's a cell reference that all our text changes are now visible. All right, so we've got availability currently selected. What I want to do is add that as a custom label so on the bar you could do it on the line but I think the bar is more appropriate right click add data labels at the moment it's just adding that number and I don't think that that's required because we can already see that from the axis so format data labels opens up a little menu here at the moment it's got value as the tick box but I'm going to choose value from cells. Finder appears. We click. We go to workings. I'm going to drag that down. It's blank at the moment, but we'll sort that out in a second. Now I'm going to untick value. And it'll all disappear for us. All right, let's do the workings now. What was selected? Availability was selected. We could use an if equation or we could use a choose equation. It doesn't really matter too much. There's plenty of ways to do it. But let's just say index is the way to go. We want to index this lot based upon a match of whatever's here don't forget to lock it with our headings drag that down to the bottom let's go to the dashboard and see what has happened okay so we've got it it's a little bit ugly we could go back to the workings and format it to one decimal place 
and that's improved a bit. It's not really telling us what that number is, so we might have to put a custom label like we did down here. That red line denotes the wrist zone. So let's try that. Insert text box, put it up here. With the box selected, I go to the formula bar and I click equals. I'm going to click one cell above, which is blank at the moment, I understand, but it won't be for long. And so by putting some text in quotes and then linking to the cell in V11, we get a dynamic label. So it says labels denote availability. Go back to the dashboard. It's not going to fit because it's too big, so there we go. Might have to go even smaller or make it go across two rows if required. So let's have a look and see what happens if we change it. So I'm not too happy with those formats. I could do a bit of work on that, but for now what we can see is that we're getting a custom label of our choice based upon those three options, chronic load, percent change from last week, or availability. So it didn't quite work out perfectly, a bit of work to do to get those labels formatted well, but because there's such significant difference between the numbers and the formats of each of those three options, it does make it quite tricky and you end up getting into uh, some pretty advanced stuff when you're trying to make that work. Not impossible, and perhaps I can uh, dedicate a video to showing you how you might solve some of that stuff. And so the moment of truth with stuff like this is to see what it looks like when you choose a different athlete. And so as you can see, everything is updating. So nothing we did in this video has broken any connection, so that's always comforting. We can see all the numbers are updating just fine, and we're getting the charts looking the way that they should, even though we've changed things. Scrolling along still has the same impact. We could make decisions about whether we need these two uh, charts on the right here. We might be able to get rid of the RPE one and therefore put a little bit more in-depth stuff around wellness. And we didn't really pay any attention to the physical stuff. Um, a, a consideration that I did have was to put in some positional uh, averages and things like that. But uh, perhaps um, another time I can do that. So hopefully these uh, additions and updates have been of interest. There's no end to the kind of stuff you can do if you've got nice tidy data. So hopefully what this extra video has demonstrated is that the flexibility is there. If you've got the basic skill, you can really extract anything you like from your data set and you can present it with the daily, weekly, monthly data and provide that extra information that can sometimes make the difference. Thanks for tuning in. I've got a new series uh, due out shortly. Cheers.